Today I want to talk a little bit about technology and what to me it means to live a low-tech lifestyle. Is it all about having the dumb phone and having the iPod? Is it all about the devices or is it something else? Let's get into it. So if you don't know me, I'm Spencer and I like to talk about simple living, frugality, and cutting down on one's technology usage, sometimes through the use of other technologies. So on this channel, I talk a lot about the low-tech lifestyle, why and how I am trying to live a low-tech lifestyle, a life less distracted by technology, using tech as a tool so I can better live my life and not letting it take away from my life, be a detriment to it. And this is a conversation that's happening all over the internet. A lot of people are weighing in on what it means to live a low-tech lifestyle and how best to approach it. One of the ways which I find myself doing sometimes and which I see happening elsewhere on the internet is this low-tech lifestyle becomes just another aspect of consumerism and it becomes the tools that you need to live a low-tech lifestyle. And often what those tools end up being are retro tech tools, are older devices. You see things like iPods, dumb phones, record players, and old digital cameras or even film cameras as a way to disconnect from smart technology and then using technology which is considered to be low-tech. But oftentimes I think this is just really a form of consumer and another distraction. And 100% I can acknowledge that these lower tech tools can be very useful in helping curb distraction as well as just be overall fun to use. I've had a lot of fun using my iPod. I've also had fun with film cameras and older digital cameras in the past and listening to records as well. But what I do worry is that overall this is just another form of materialism and it just gives somebody something expensive to lust after to take their attention elsewhere, but it's still not really focusing on something that's gonna feel good at the end of the day. Once you've spent a few hundred dollars on an overinflated price for an iPod classic, and you've uploaded your songs and you're listening to them, are you still gonna feel better at the end of the day? Or are you gonna find yourself distracted by things that ultimately you don't find too useful, too beneficial? I've talked about this in the past too, but at every point in history, people have found the tool of the day to be distracting and they've wanted to go back to a previous time's tools to enjoy those retro tools instead. You know, in the case of even Henry David Thoreau, you know, the author of Walden, I love Walden. He talks about at that time, the telegraph lines, they were just kind of coming about or coming into popularity. And he said, what business do I have to speak to somebody on the other side of the country? He felt that something like that was a distraction and it wasn't worth having around. And he wanted to go back to a time before the telegraph line. Another one of my favorite simple living advocates is Scott Nearing. Now Scott Nearing, he was mainly writing in the early and mid 1900s about simple living. One of his go-to books was Living the Good Life, and it was written with his wife, Helen. Now, I found a video clip somewhere where his wife, Helen, was talking about before he passed away, up until that point, they had never had a radio in their home because Scott didn't like the noise of that device. He felt that it was a distracting device. He felt that it was telling him all this stuff that he didn't need to hear about. He was going to hear at some point anyway what was truly important to him and that the rest of it was just distraction and noise, and he chose to live a life where that technology wasn't present. I also even heard criticism of the iPod that before the iPod, people were just walking around and they were able to, you know, talk to one another in the streets. They weren't shutting into their own world, walking around in an individualistic, you know, personalized soundtrack with those white headphones where they're basically just kind of living their own individualistic life and not really completely oblivious to what's going on around them. So there's also been that level of critique at something that we're all pretty fond of, which is the iPod. What I'm saying is... There's not going to be a specific tool that is going to set you free from the distractions of technology. Even those tools that we like to use here in 2024 to be a little less distracted by modern smart devices were the distracting tools of yesteryear. So we need to keep that in mind. What do I recommend doing as a solution? For me, I think it is really just, I like to hammer this home and I wanna hammer this home more on this channel. It is finding better ways to spend your time that you're ultimately gonna feel good about at the end of the day. And this is most likely gonna have nothing to do with technology and it's gonna have more to do with creative fulfillment. It doesn't matter if you have an iPod, a typewriter, a giant collection of VHS tapes, you're most likely, you still have a computer, you still have some way to distract yourself in the modern way, and you can still waste your time even if you didn't have a computer on things that you ultimately don't feel that good about. You could just lay around watching TV. You know, you could be playing video games all day. You could be just 
doing something that you don't find valuable and you don't find productive when you reflect on how that time was spent. Now, how you're gonna approach that is gonna be unique to each individual situation. For me, I like to sit down with a pen and a paper and I like to write down, what do I wanna be doing with my time? You know, just kind of get myself a little roster of things that I think are valuable ways to spend my time, just general activities that I think are, you know, admirable ways to use my time if I have free time. But adding to that, I'm also going to have things that I want to be doing actively at a given time. Certain projects that I'm actively working on that I know I need to be working on. Something that I have been working on recently this week is trying to better schedule my days so that I don't find myself in boredom where my time is completely empty and I have no thing to do because then I just end up doing nothing and I never end up feeling good at the end of that time period. A lot of people that I respect and look up to, you know, people like Benjamin Franklin, people like Scott Nearing, people like Ernest Hemingway, they were all known for being very regimented individuals and for scheduling their day. Their success wasn't just an accident, it was because they had a very routine-based kind of regimen that they followed every single day. They had their time slotted out so that they didn't just fall into good projects and you know good results, they made those things happen by actually prioritizing the good things that they wanted to come to fruition in their life. And of course, this is gonna be applicable to success in general, but it's also going to be applicable to your success in ending digital distraction. It's not going to just be buying the next low-tech tool, distraction-free device, because there's always going to be something, there has always been throughout all of history, some useless thing that you could be doing to occupy your time. So what we need to strive to do is to occupy our time better. This is really the key. Figuring out what is the best use of our time, scheduling our time, and then building the discipline to actually follow that schedule. And one other thing that I'm gonna add here is something else I talk about on the channel, and it's that I don't blame people for not having the willpower, you know, for their willpower being eroded by these smart devices and them using them for things that ultimately don't feel good at the end of the day, because these companies want you to fail right? Companies don't want you to use these devices like a tool, get in, use what you want and get out and go and live your life to a fulfilling degree. They want you to use that tool as much as possible so they can harvest your data to sell to advertisers or so they can show you ads for advertisers. That is the point of these devices, right? The tool is the tool, but you have to basically imagine you're walking down a street of hustlers and they're all calling out to you. They're all trying to distract you to come over and take a look at their wares, maybe buy something. You need to be able to have the fortitude to put the blinders on, to go in there, get what you want, and then get out. And that is a lot easier said than done. It is something that I wanna talk a little bit more about on this channel because it's not just buy this next thing and you're going to end your digital distraction. This one tool ended my digital distraction. It didn't. It may help, it definitely helps, but at the end of the day, the only thing that's gonna end your digital distraction is you building discipline, building fortitude, and honestly, guys, that is in short supply here in 2024, and that is nobody's fault. I guess it is the system's fault, but it's pretty hard to point a finger at the system as a whole. So what I'm working on here is individual things that we can do to help improve our day-to-day -day lives. And hopefully we can teach them to one another and it will make systemic broad change amongst our communities. So a bit of a rant and ramble today, but this is just something that I have been thinking about a lot. And I don't want this to be a channel that's just focused around gear. You know, I think that's ultimately what happens to any sort of movement is it gets focused around the tools that you can buy in order to you know, make the change that you want in your life. It's a lot easier to purchase something than to actually make the personality changes that are required to make big changes happen in your life. It's a lot easier to buy that silver bullet, that one thing that's gonna fix all of your problems, but in the end, it usually doesn't fix all of your problems, and there you are, really the source of your problems. That's something that I've certainly found in my life. You know, I talk about all of this stuff, but it's still a journey that I am on myself. I am not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, folks. This is something that I work on from day to day. I read about it, I reflect on it, and hopefully I get a little bit better each time. And I hope that's happening with you as well. This is a journey that we're all on together. 
I hope you found this video interesting. I wanna hear from you guys what you think about this topic in general in the comments, what types of mindset shifts you're doing. If you think that mindset shifts are really what is needed to make these big changes, and then what types of videos you'd like to see from me on these types of topics in the future or on some other type of topic. I would be happy to hear from you either way, folks. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.